Hello everybody, Tom Morley here from POS365 where we use free open source software 365 days a year. This is going to be a quick tip tutorial on stylized text in Natron. So let's get started. Okay everybody, this video was inspired by Indie Rebel Video Effects. They have a YouTube channel. They're also part of a Facebook group that I'm on as well and he created a video on stylized text strokes in Natron and basically what I put together is because he showed me how to do it um, and I put a couple of little extra things in in my video to um, that you'll see here shortly and there was conversation in the Facebook group about maybe a way to do a shortcut when you're linking the two text nodes together uh, rather than doing a link between every single aspect of the node, we can just clone the node and then turn off or unlink the um, certain variables that we don't want linked together. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But basically, I wanted to come up with a nice stylized text that I could use for my intro for a art exhibit that I went to in Pensacola. So basically, I created this stylized artwork and you can see that it's got sort of like um, streaks of light going across the stylized text as well so that kind of gives it a, a hint of uh, maybe being glass itself so let's um let's get into how to create the style here and you'll see that i wrapped this up in a nice background just like uh, indie rebel video effects did as well um, but I'm going to break it down here and show you all the different pieces and how to that shortcut with um, cloning the node rather than trying to link all of the different aspects of the of the text node itself. So let's create a text node here. Now there's a couple of ways we could take care of this. We could create another text node and link all of the elements we want. Or we had that conversation on Facebook that we just really want to clone the nodes so that they're linked together automatically and remove the elements we don't want linked together. So let's right click on the text. Let's go up and let's clone the node. And when you clone it, you'll see that it's got a red connecting pipe, not a black, but a red one. And that means that basically anything you do in text in this text, well, let's rename that to text one just so it isn't so confusing and we'll rename this to text two, not text two two. Okay. So anything I do in text one will happen in text two. So let's check that out. Let's connect it here. Uh, we'll center interact it and check it out. <clears throat> Did the same thing to our text two. So any, like I said, anything we do in here will happen in our secondary text as well. So let's go ahead and put in Natron here. We probably want a white background to work with so that I can show you everything that I'm doing. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a lot bigger just so that we see what's going on. Uh, white's fine. Let's go ahead and stroke this out a little bit. Let's go maybe about that far with red. Red is absolutely fine. Now let's, let's add a merge node here. Let's highlight that text node, hit tab. Well, actually, you don't have to do that. I don't have to bring it up. There's shortcuts. Just highlight it and press M for merge. And let's pipe text one into A and text two into B. And let's add a third color, something a little bit wider than just the two, the color, regular text color and the stroke that you normally get in a text. Now we can do a third because these are linked together. But first we need to bring up text two and we need to unlink what we don't want to have tied together. And that would be our stroke size. So let's go down here to stroke size, right click on it and unlink it from text one here. So now they're not linked together. If I want, I can, I also don't want the colors linked together because I want to be able to do my own color here. I'm going to unlink it. Um, I'm going to go through all these so that they're all unlinked. 
and I'm going to change this color just so that we can see what it is. Let's change that color to maybe a yellow. Yeah, that'll work. And I'll click OK. Now I don't see it because the size is all the same right now, but if I take the stroke and I add some extra pixels to it, then you start to get what you saw in Indie Rebels video. This is the exact same things. Um, he connected the elements separately. All we did was we basically linked them together by cloning it and then just removed the elements we didn't want. Um, we get everything else for free, which is really nice. Uh, I want to also have a white background. because What I would really like is I would like the ability to have a shadow on this as well. So how can I do that? There's probably multiple ways. I'll show you how I did it. Uh, let's create a, another merge node here. And let's create a constant color. Let's change it to white. Pipe it into B. Change that to white so that you can see it. Um, okay, now let's change the inner color a little bit. Uh, let's change that to maybe a, an orange, maybe. No. Um, that'll work for now. And um, so, how am I going to get a shadow? One way to get a shadow would be to use the existing secondary text box. We want to be able to transform the location a little bit, right? We might want it down and to the left or down and to the right or up. So we're going to need a transform node. Let's so I have to just press T for a transform. And I'm going to use the text two as my source. I could just link that into B here. I'm going to need one more merge node, so let's go ahead and create one more. So I still want my white background. So basically I've got my two stylized text nodes here. I'm going into a transform node and I can set the translate X and Y. Let's just say 20. Uh, not negative 20. We want positive 20 here. I don't know why I pressed the minus in there. There we go. And then negative 20 maybe. So we want it to be basically over and down. And you can see it's yellow. So we're going to have to deal with that. So we can use a modulate node. the control key to kind of paste things in in the center there and I can use this to basically turn my saturation all the way down and my brightness all the way down so basically I just turned it into a black shadow and then because this is such a harsh shadow uh, maybe I want that to be blurred a little bit so let's go ahead and get a blur node There, and now we can blur it out a little bit and you'll see that it starts to look like a shadow rather than this really hard edge thing. So you can use that to basically create a shadow. And if you, if you want it to be farther away, then you can do that just by going back to your transform and, and upping the values here. Maybe you want it to 40 and negative 40. That might be much, but let's go ahead and check it out. Mm -hmm. Not too bad, actually. Uh, we might want to blur it out a little bit more. So, get the blur node. Let's blur it out just a, sh a little bit more. Blur it out just a little bit more. There you go. Kind of looks like a Christmas natron, doesn't it? It's kind of crazy. Um, but there you have it. You've got your original text. You've got your clone text. So that gives you the ability to have a third ring of color or style around your fonts which is pretty cool we merge those two together we're using the secondary text and the transform node to move the secondary text 
over and down and we get a shadow we're blurring it out and then we can use that with any background we want uh, if you've got a uh, let's go ahead and grab something from the art show this one um, go ahead and close that and i'm gonna move this to my version of natron drop it in there get rid of this constant and there we go so basically i have my setup here i can move that over and if you want to keep everything neat just like uh, andy rebel said create a background node or backdrop then put that over all of your nodes and when you move it around you can that's that's your text you, know, you can rename it if you want to whatever you want and basically make everything look good and there you have it basically the same setup as uh, indie rebel effects at this point uh, I don't think he added the the shadow so that that's a nice touch that you can use and um, if you want the glint to go across it that is called the light sweep so let's go ahead and grab the light sweep it's right there now we want to put that I guess you could put it in before in between text one or two but I found it to look better if you put it in between text one, uh, text one and the merge. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go. And I'm not going I'm just going to leave it at, well, no, I need some animation, don't I? So let's put it here. Let's move it all the way over to here. Let's right click and create a key. And let's go all the way to the other side. And let's rotate that glint. You see how when I'm rotating it, it um, basically goes across the, the text. So that's, that's a way for you to kind of add a little detail to your text animations. All right. So now if I play that, um, there you go. You get that nice glint across the, the text there. So that's how, um, that's how you create the the text with the glints on it but if you want to move it around transform node for this whole thing so let's go ahead and grab one i'm not going to put it in yet because i want to basically see this glint so yeah see it it looks kind of nice just an, a little extra touch across the uh the font so that that's kind of cool and then you basically would drop this transform node in there so that um you can use this transform node to move the um, text wherever you want it. And th then it brings everything along, <laughs> right? It brings your two clone nodes together as well as the shadow. Everything stays right with it. So that's kind of cool. You can use that to move it around. Um, you can create an animation with that. You can use that transform node to rotate it too. So it's kind of a nice, neat little setup that you um, you can use over and over again in your projects. So hopefully you learned something. Don't forget to go to Indie Rebel Video Effects channel. Subscribe and ring the bell over there. Subscribe and ring the bell here uh, because there's a lot more coming down the road. So hopefully you like the video and I'll see you in the next one.